Hey y'all, I'm JD. Welcome back to the Dimensions Woodworks Woodshop. Today we're going to be doing something really different for the channel. I'm going to be going through the process of putting together my very first 3D printer. Let's go get started. And this is basically everything included. Of course, the instruction manual there, hardware pack, some aluminum extruded bars. Uh, what is this? Oh, uh, this is the control panel, the power supply. Um, no idea really what these assemblies are yet. One of them, I would assume, is the print head nozzle thing. Uh, and this may be where the filament actually comes out. So. Let's get into the instructions and see how long it takes to put this thing together. All right, so step one, open our hardware pack. We are looking for 15 and 16, which I think are these aluminum extrusions. One of these has a rod in it. It's a threaded rod inside of the sleeve. I guess that allows you to go up and down. 15 has the two holes on the side, 16 has the holes at the bottom. Little baby pair of cutters. They go through the bottom here to attach to the extruder. This one has the two holes at the bottom. Started finger tight. And it's showing the two holes that are there have to go to the inside. So we're bolting the power supply up to these two holes that we talked about earlier. This one is M4 by 20. 4 by 20. And these go through there. So our next little piece has a connector and it's got uh, what I refer to as uh, T-slot screws that are already screwed in there, but they're going to slot into the groove of the outer part of this extrusion. So it's showing out to the side of its control. Down. So after checking out another online tutorial for somebody who has more experience, this is my very first time doing this, um, putting one of these guys together, I did notice that there was a little bit of slop in the bed. So we've taken off the Z supports, the those vertical aluminum extrusions, the power supply, and um, our control interface. Took all that off, and we're gonna loosen and retighten these little uh, slides here on the bottom before we get all the way done. I think that's, that's what it was right there, that one screws. Super loose, so the whole bed was loose. That, everything's good.
Okay, now uh, the Z motor. Essentially, as we tighten this um, little coupling around the threaded rod, that split begins to close up around the rod and hold it into place. Piece uh, 19 just has two holes at the top and bottom, so we don't need that. Piece 18 has a large hole at the top and bottom, and then two smaller holes um, on either end. On one side, there's one on each side. Okay, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is thread our little nozzle in here. Okay, so here we go. Make sure you use that cutout. And make sure that it's on the side with the screwed out divot there. And that's why there's a hole through here. And that end of this Allen wrench that they said is not great, so I'm going to grab one of mine. Okay, so I went ahead and got an Allen wrench out of my kit because these guys that they sent have these little knobby ends on them. You know, it's hard to see, but that little knobby end. And this is just a straight end Allen wrench because you have to use the long side on this application, so it's a little bit easier to get on it. So, again, we have that cut out in the extrusion, and that makes it sit flat. And then we're going to put our screws in. Okay, so now we have the belt tensioner that we have to install, and it is going to go in. So, we got the fan, is what I'm looking at for reference. These little T nuts again, and you have to make sure they're oriented correctly and you slide right in there in that slot. <clears throat> so you have to loosen them up a bit to get them in that slot. But make sure they are oriented correctly vertically in this position. You're just going to cinch them down enough to where we can still move it, but it's being held into place. Then we're going to get our belt. Belt is in its own little bag, and we're going to get this guy situated around those controls. Let's move that to about the middle, and let me see where this belt connects to. So on the bottom of that roller assembly there, there's a couple little slots cut in, into it, and that's what's going to grab the ends of the belt that have uh, basically a crimp on them. That little crimp is going to hold it in place. I have it somewhat spaced correctly. And let that crimp go to the bottom. And got it in both sides. Situation like this, you don't want to get this too terribly tight, which if it can't be loose or it'll want to slip off of there. So that seems about good. And the belt's rubber, so it's kind of like a rubber band, so there is some elasticity to it. That's helpful. Okay. Well, okay. Come on, let's do this again just to make sure. Yep, we can move that way. We can move this way. And now we are good. So that's step seven and eight. It's kind of together. Okay, so now we're going to put this whole situation that we just finished. We're going to get all this installed. So we have our power supply facing in that direction. And I just saw it. There it is. Okay. 
So this whole little assembly here, you can see the, the threads through there, so we're going to set that. Yeah. These rails are still not completely tight so that we have a little play in and we can get this situated the way it needs to. All the rollers, all of these rollers are going to roll against the sides of the extrusion. So they're where they want to be. And as we're doing that, I want to try to begin to thread. Uh, and then our other um, aluminum extrusion that's going to go across the top here again. Look where they have screwed them out. There's like a hollowed space where it looks like they kind of use a countersink bit or a larger drill bit to make room for the heads of those bolts to go. And that's going to go right on top. Step 11 is the spool holder, which is this guy here, in combination with that. And 5x8, the little small silver screws. Not too difficult, but again, if it was me writing the instructions, I wouldn't have put these top bolts in. I would have slid that in first and then put those bolts in, and at least in one side. That makes it a little easier. The spool holder is threaded at the end here, it looks like. Now that all of the hardware and pieces are in place, now they're still backwards. It's still turned around, but that's fine because it's going to come in handy in a second. Uh, first thing we're going to do is connect our little two-piece into the fitting that we put in here earlier. And it just goes right in there like that. Boom. Now we need to come find all of our connectors. And pull them out to where we can get to them. So e for the extruder. Okay, so then this guy goes, the bigger X goes here. Okay. Now we have one labeled down here on a very short run on the inside of the main bracket that is uh, labeled Z. So it will come into the Z right there. Okay. Okay, and then the Z motor. Okay. And then we'll connect our power supply wire, which is big and uh, red and black with a yellow tip. We'll connect that guy. Now that's connected. Now while we're back here, uh, one thing I did early on that I did not mention, inside of here. So one of the first things I did inside of here in the back of the power supply is very vague in the instructions as to how to get that done. There's a little switch. It flips up and down. By default it's automatically set to 230 because everything in Europe is 230. Everything in the US is 115. So we want to make sure our switch is on 115. Okay. Uh, now we have to connect the screen in the front, so we'll flip around to that. So the last step is to connect the ribbon, the ribbon connector to the screen, and it's going to go to the one all the way closest to the inside of the bed. <clears throat> plug that guy up there. Okay, so everything's looking good. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the power cord. Now for the moment of truth to see if all of this did anything, we're going to try to turn it on. Well, the screen's lighting up. That's a plus. I hear the fan going. That's good. Going to prepare and put it on. See if it goes where it's supposed to go.
Okay, so that zeroed out where it was supposed to. And now that everything's on and I know that it's working, I'm going to make sure that the bed is level and do it with a piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed. And there we go. So we got it all done, taken out of the box, set up, dialed in, bed flattened. And I tested with some filament, heated the nozzle up, pushed the filament through, make sure the bed gets hot and the nozzle gets hot. And everything looks good. We're going to make a couple little notes right here. I did a test print with one of the files that was on the SD card that comes with the Ender 3. I printed the little pig. I used the filament that came with the printer, which was a bad idea in hindsight because it jammed, but it gave me a good opportunity to learn how to continue a stopped print. The little spool that sent with the Ender 3 got hung up. I had other filaments I should have used. That little spool got hung up and stopped the printer from printing. So I had to learn how to fix that, which was actually a good thing for my very first time trying to use the printer. So that caused that instance to happen. But once I got it fixed, you'll see the layer line in there where that happened. Um, I got it, the printer to pick up and continue and actually had a relatively successful first print from my Ender 3. Thanks so much for watching y'all and for sticking around until the end. Don't forget like, comment, share, subscribe. Doesn't cost you a penny. Really helps out the channel. And all you gotta do is click some buttons, so why not? Having the 3D printer in my arsenal now has expanded things greatly. There's all kind of use cases for it that you don't even think about initially when you're purchasing it. Um, I bought it for a very specific reason, but now I've found all kinds of things that I can do with it. As long as you can think it up and you can draw it in a CAD program, you can print it. I've made adapters, I've made tool holders, I've made all kinds of things now that I have the ability to do that with the 3D printer in the shop. And all in all, with the cost of 3D printing going down so significantly in the last five to 10 years, why not? It's just another tool in the maker arsenal. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we're all here to do? Just make something cool that wasn't there before we started. But thanks again, y'all. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, don't forget to get better every day.